CIUT 89.5 FM has been the soundtrack to your morning that helps get you motivated for the day or informed about the community news that matters to you most. We love that you listen, but also consider a financial contribution to ensure that we stay on air and vital. Every little bit counts. Thank you. CIUT 89.5, the sound of your city. Stream CIUT at www.ciut.fm. Hello, my night owls and early birds. Welcome to another edition of The More, The Merrier. For those of you who are new to the show, I'm Donna G. Coming up on today's show, I have two Toronto International Film Festival interviews to share with you. The first is Dustin, directed by Naila Gige, and this film won the IMDb Pro Shortcuts Award Best Film. The second interview will be with director Alessandra Ramirez, and her film is called Thai in Portuguese, as I learned, Elo. But first, here's some music from Toronto flautist Jeff Kearns.
I interviewed director Naila Giguet, uh just prior to the announcement a few days later that she was a winner of the IMDb Pro Shortcuts Awards. So you can imagine my excitement that she had won, uh, especially after having done the interview with her about this short film featuring a trans subject matter and the actor in the role is also trans. Here now is that interview about the film Dustin. Nyla, your film Dustin is part of the Toronto International Film Festival 2020. Can you please share what it was like to find out that your film had been selected? Uh, c'est un vrai honneur parce que le, pour moi, le Festival de Toronto, c'est uh, un des festivals uh, qui uh, me faisait le plus rêver en tant qu'arrivatrice. Et uh, j'étais vraiment très, très uh, fière et contente de savoir que le film était pris dans la sélection. Uh, it was a real honor because the Toronto Film Festival is one of the festivals that made me dream about being a director. Uh, I was very proud and happy to know that Dustin was selected in the competition. Where were you when you found out that you had been selected for the Toronto International Film Festival? And I know we're in a pandemic, so were you alone or were you with others? And uh, how did you share the news if you were with others? Actually, I was at my place with my child and uh, I just uh, gave birth. So I had a really small baby. Congratulations. And, uh, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and I was really excited about knowing like I was selected. And uh, Louis Jantin called me and uh, I was very happy. But because it was a lockdown and I was with my two very small child, I don't really have time to party or on dit fête ça. To celebrate. To celebrate and to be happy because I was very rushed in the <laughs> <laughs> So who else? So it's you and your baby and who else? My wife. Okay. All right. And uh, did she believe you right away or did she think maybe you were kidding? She was really proud, actually. But no, she, she believed me because I, 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 she, she knew me and she knew that I was not going to tell her something wrong. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, I asked because some of the directors that, uh, that I've been speaking to, they were shocked. They couldn't quite believe it. You know, oh, they thought no. maybe they thought maybe somebody was playing a joke on them when they, you know, when they heard the news. Yeah, but sorry, but I was in a really concrete stuff with my baby and my child, so I was not like having time to <laughs> thought about something like it's not really concrete. <laughs> how old was how old was your baby at the time? Um, uh, I have a girl which is three years old and a baby boy which is like five months. Oh, so you had much, <laughs> you had yes, more, yes. you had bigger things to think about <laughs> right there. You're just yes. concerned with being yes. a mom. <laughs> yes, that's why. <right. laughs> well, one day your children are going to realize that even in a pandemic that, you know, um, mommy worked and uh, yes. that, that they were that your concern before a, a big film festival. Yes. <laughs> How did you meet your, your lead actress? Euh, c'est une amie à moi je l'ai rencontrée il y a 10 ans à peu près et on a été amis avant euh, même euh, que je commence à faire du cinéma et avant même que elle commence à être euh, à une personne trans et euh, on a été amis pendant longtemps et, euh, et voilà et en fait le film est né aussi d'une discussion qu'on a eu ensemble euh, il y a 5 ou 6 ans à un moment où euh, c'était encore compliqué pour elle d'assumer sa transidentité. Et euh, voilà, et ensuite j'ai eu une première idée de scénario qui s'est euh, modifiée avec le temps et avec la personne qu'elle est elle aussi devenue et que moi aussi je suis devenue avec le genre de film que j'avais envie de faire. Euh, Naila says that she met Dustin, the lead uh, character, the lead actress, 10 years ago. They were friends even before Naila started to make films uh, and also even before uh, Dustin started her transition. Um, they were friends for a long time and the movie was born um, in, by a discussion they had uh, maybe five or six years ago uh, at the moment where Dustin in the real life had 
question about assuming her trans identity. Um, it became a first idea of the screenplay who evolved, which evolved uh, during the fabrication of the movie um, relating to her, Naila, as a director and also related to Dustin as the main character of the movie. The warehouse uh, that this is set in, um, the film takes place over the course of a night and they're in a warehouse setting. How did you find that location and what were some of the difficulties in shooting in that location? Um, en fait, c'est euh, on a tourné dans, du coup dans une soirée en, dans une soirée techno warehouse qui s'appelle Possession et qui est une soirée euh, que j'organise avec euh, du coup euh, ma femme et euh, une autre amie. Et euh, euh, l'idée à la base c'était de réussir à greffer le tournage sur une de ces soirées qui allait avoir lieu pour de vrai. Et euh, du coup, c'était ça. On était nous tributaires euh, de du lieu qu'allaient trouver euh, euh, les organisateurs de la soirée euh, pour euh, pour faire cette soirée. Et c'était vraiment, euh, on allait euh, nous suivre euh, euh, ce qui allait être cette soirée ce soir-là. Et on savait que euh, on a tourné au mois de décembre 2019. Et on savait que en décembre 2019, il allait y avoir deux soirées de suite et qu'on allait pouvoir du coup euh, tourner deux nuits de suite, ça aurait été compliqué s'il n'y avait qu'une nuit. Et voilà, et du coup, c'est une soirée dans laquelle je suis moi DJ résidente, et dans laquelle euh, j'ai mes marques, je connais tout le monde, c'est euh, mon équipe, mes amis, et c'était très agréable du coup de tourner dedans, parce qu'on était vraiment... Euh... Um, we shout in a real techno warehouse uh, party, um, organized by, by a collective called Possession. Uh, which is our, um, which are parties that I organize with my wife and another friend. The idea uh, for the shooting was to be able to shoot in one of those parties that we organize uh, that was going to take place for real, the party. Um, we were we were dependent on the place where the party was going to take place because we didn't know before where, where it was going to happen. And so we had to integrate the shooting in the party. We shot in December um, uh, last year. Uh, and what which was great was that um, two parties were going to happen um, one day and the other day um, on Friday and Saturday night. Voilà, on the same weekend. So it was great for the shooting because it would have been complicated to just have, to just have one night to shoot. This time it was exceptional. There were two nights uh, of party. Um, I'm also a resident, a DJ a resident in those events um, that we organize with my friends and so it was really comfortable and pleasant for me as a director to shoot in the party uh, organized by my friend my team uh, we were like at home um so you knew dustin what about the ensemble because this is a group of friends that are hanging out for the night uh, did you know yes. the others as well Yes, actually, I was uh, I was very friendly with all of them, and I knew that uh, Dustin, Felix, and Raya was very friend too. But I ignored that uh, Juan was also part of the, the group, and it was a very great surprise when I um, realized that Juan was at, as um, uh, close as close uh, as Dustin, Raya, and Felix, uh, because I didn't know it. Um, and I really wanted to shoot my friends in this movie. So it was really cool for the shooting because uh, the group uh, exists before the movies and we could, we, we, we can, uh, we could like uh, focus on the, on the scene and on the story and not, uh, and uh, I didn't lose time to make this group feeling real because it was a real group. So you have the shooting in the, in the warehouse two nights. Um, yes. How much time did you spend um, on the rest of the shoot? Uh, we had uh, four days and two nights. Four, four days before and two nights in the warehouse. Okay. And uh, whose apartment did you use? It's uh, it's an apartment from two friends of mine, which are like uh, really rich. <laughs> and it's like not a real couple of um, guy, but it's two gay guy 
uh, who are like pretty friends and they booked uh, an apartment together, but they are not pretty together. And uh, they live there. And I knew that this apartment exists because some of my friends went there for some parties and um, I saw some pictures. So I was like, okay, it could be a really good place. And that's why I should there. And it was really easy because it was my, my friend. And, uh, so they were okay. So us. this is a this is a, f- a story of friendship on screen and off screen yes. as well. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. Trans uh, actors have been fighting for a long time uh, to to be seen. So I found it very refreshing for you to tell um, this story featuring Dustin, a trans actor playing a trans actor on screen. Um, did Dustin contribute to the story as well? Uh, not really. I was really inspired by her because it's my friend. But mm-hmm. uh, the story that uh, she tell, she told me um, five years ago was not the story I wrote, and I, uh, which is on the on the movie. And uh, she did not collaborate to the script, but uh, I send her the scripts each time I move something mm-hmm. to be sure that she will be agree with what the screen is telling yeah. about. The reality. And so, yes, yeah, the reality. And I was really, um, I really take care about the fact that she will be okay with what the movie are going to say. That's all. But I write the script by myself. Yes. Uh, the scene in the apartment where she is, you know, sort of the object of fascination uh, I have uh, friends who are trans and they have this experience a lot where, you know, men are fascinated by them. So that moment in the film seemed very real to me. So thank you for including that. You're welcome. But it's, it's, it's uh, you, you know, uh, Dustin is also a model and um, a DJ and um, the thing was, uh, which was very important for me in this movie was take uh, was, um Talk about that. No, I was talking about the fact that uh, trans people now in Paris, and I, do, I, I don't know if it's the case like somewhere else, but I'm a Parisian, so uh, it's um, they are like the object of fascination, and uh, in all of the media and uh, even in the publicity or movies, it's like we are going to shoot trans people because it's cool, you know, for now, and. Uh, it's a, a kind of fascination which uh, excludes some, um, uh, I, I don't know, but um, by example, Dustin um, tell me a story. She was like doing a campaign for a huge uh, trademark. And uh, after the, the shooting, there was like um, a diner and everybody was uh, calling her uh, E and not she. Oh. And she realized that nobody really take her about what she really is. And it was, they just like use her to have like some cool publicity for the mark, you know? And mm-hmm. it was also like something I wanted to denounce in the movie. Yes, because it's very, it's very painful to be denied your own identity and to be used, you know, just as a marketing tool. Yes. Yeah. And it's uh, a really problem today, I think. Yes, it is a big problem today mm. where something becomes uh, cool for one day, but they're not really, um, people are not really focused on the reality behind uh, yes. the sort of coolness, the, the, it's happening, it's now, it's very now, but, uh, yes. you know, this is, these are people's lives that uh, and you that know like uh, ev- yes and you know like even if uh, Raya and Dustin not the character in the movie but the person in the real life uh, they are a little bit like really uh, good including in some kind of way they still cannot like walk uh, in the streets by day and be like uh, uh, serene peaceful, peaceful. yes yeah. mm-hmm. they are always like uh, they're always afraid of being like um, attacked. Yes, it's very, yes. Trans murders, um, the yes. numbers are extraordinary. Even in my city of Toronto, it is an issue too. Mostly trans uh, women um, being attacked and, and murdered. So 
in Toronto, we're trying to raise awareness about this and uh, to keep our sisters safe. But uh, yeah, it's very dangerous uh, to be yourself in public when people are not accepting of you. So yes, and there is also uh, something complicated be um, because, like, um, cis men, um, uh, when they saw like a trans woman, uh, at first they don't even know that there is that they are like trans women and they saw that it's only like a woman and after when they realize that they um qui qui ont été um qui ont genre éprouvé du désir pour une meuf trans mm. when, when men understand that they experience desire for these girls who are actual trans girls it 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 they are angry after themselves because of what they feel they felt yeah and they want to to, to beat the trans women mm -hmm. yeah it's their own uh you know sense of masculinity that's that's hurt it's all about yeah. them and their anger and you know not accepting that they can be attracted to to somebody that they didn't think they would be it's disgusting and uh, it's it's dangerous for 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 women. So, yeah, I get that. Um, and uh, you know, men need to educate themselves. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, um, thank you so much, Nyla, for joining me, and Lou for for translating uh, for us. It's been a pleasure to talk about this film for you uh, with you. You're welcome. And uh, I was just I, I was riveted by Dustin because she's so beautiful. And yes. and I'm short, and she has these long legs, and I was like, "Oh my God, you're so stunning!" Um, <laughs> and I love the way you end the film with her, you know, that sort of, you know, "Good day, Miss." Such a simple thing that, um, yes. you know, that uh, uh, women born women have all the time, but trans women don't always have. So thank you for ending the film that way. Thank you. Thanks to you. Thanks to you. Nothing in that. Thank you. Merci. Thank you, very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. And that was my interview with Parisian director Naila Guiguet uh, with translation by Lou. Merci, Lou. Up next will be my interview with uh, Portuguese director Alexandra Ramirez. And um, I learned how to pronounce her name during the interview, so I'm very, very proud that I'm able to say it right this time. Um, you'll hear during the interview uh, that uh, I asked her to pronounce some other names in relation to her film. But before we get to that interview, here is uh, Lady Lesti, and this is called Ooh Child. You're listening to The More the Merrier with Donna G on CIUT 89.5 FM. Sweetness Lady Mystère millénaire Mettre un enfant sur terre Et si ça t'a millénaire Même pas voir le père Mon avis se perd Peut-être parmi tes pensées massées sur le palier, ta conscience fatiguée T'es du père, mais surtout pas du Mère, enfant ou mère seulement C'est le moment d'affronter la réalité L'enfant est né hier Pas de signe de l'autre parent Malgré espoir et prière Prière de laisser dormir les mamans T'entends, au couloir Les papas peuvent rester plus longtemps seulement Pas de mensonge qui t'aspire comme une éponge Plonge dans le bain, regarde la gifle que la vie t'allonge Yeah. 
tiennent les tapis days, les murs sont tapissés D'images de photos, comme pour rapiesser Les morceaux de ta mémoire, celle qui veut oublier La faiblesse de ton cœur, pourquoi avoir flanché Il a dit qu'il t'aimait, ou t'as voulu l'entendre Tendre la corde pour soi-même, se prendre, rendre Responsable, tout mettre sur d'autres, l'amour se faire prendre A son propre jeu, faut assumer, t'es assez grande Pas d'apien, ni d'appui days, sans que t'as pas pigé Mère tes mères, sans père, tu peux pas te défiler hey. Tu peux pas te défiler, mais non, il va falloir assumer tes mères. Serrer son enfant Contre son cœur Savoir qu'on tient son propre sang Et que sans regret de rancœur On vive à son heure On kiffe sa candeur Vise pour lui des hauteurs Moteur nos actions On se pose en faction Défend sa vie Comme les gardes du président Le fond Au fond Devenir parent C'est responsable Jusqu'au fond de sa tombe Et peut-être assuré Même d'en haut My name is Elshandra Ramich. I'm the director of the film uh, Thai. It's an animation film and uh, here I am to talk with you. 
So the name of your film is Thai. Uh, yes, um, actually, the name in, in Portuguese it's Elo. Elo, if we translate directly, it means link. But uh, in Portuguese, makes sense to to be Elo because Elo it means he, Ela means she, and Elo means link. So it's like a combination of a uh, he and she. <laughs> Uh, and to, when I translate, I would like to still have three letters because there is three characters in the film. Uh, and also because link, uh, I associate sometimes to the, the idea of the link of the internet or something. And Thai, I think, would fit more than link itself. But it's a film about uh, how we can adapt to the other. So Thai, it's also something that connects, might, might connect uh people, characters, things. So I, I thought it would fit <laughs> the name, the title of the film. Yes, yeah, so it's always interesting to to talk to directors and find out what the translation of their titles mean. So thank you for sharing that. <laughs> You're welcome, Donna. <laughs> You're welcome. You wrote the script with um, Regina. Yes, that's true. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you pronounce her last name for us. Guimarães. Okay. <laughs> Regina Guimarães. Yes, that's it. <laughs> Who came up with the idea first, or was this really collaborative? The two of you did it together. Well, actually, I started uh, this a bit uh, uh, alone. I, I was reading some stuff that uh, bring image to my mind, and uh, I start drawing, and then I create these characters, and then I start to create a narrative through drawings, because my language is main, mainly drawing. Uh, but I felt the need of, uh, of to have some text. And she's a, a Regina Guimarães, she's a poet. And uh, I really like her way of writing and she's, she's used to, to write for cinema. Uh, so after to have a lot of images, I, I, I knock to her door and I ask her to help me to improve the, um, uh, the story through words. Uh, and it was really helpful because her words helped me to create more images. So it was a kind of a ping pong process. I create images and then I give to her and then she will bring me more words that become in new images. And uh, then after that, we, we in the end, we had the script. But uh, the, the first idea, it was uh, mainly uh, by drawing and Regina helped me like in the second part when the the structure of the film was already uh, done, okay. uh, but it's it's a nice process. I like I like a lot. <laughs> yes. So, did you always have the image to be in in black and white, or was there a time when you considered using color? Uh, well, I'm not really good in colors. I must. Okay. <laughs> and actually, it has a, 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 some appointments of colors. There is some uh, pinkish uh, parts in mm -hmm. the bodies. Where, where the body is real, there is a pink uh, appointment of color. Uh, but uh, my background is re really connected to printmaking, to engraving some techniques that are usually, that just use one color usually. And and actually, uh, it's for me easy easy to to think in that way because it's easy to to think in the lights, you know, mm -hmm. because the light and shadow here are are really really helps the environment. I think um, are easier to work when you do it like in a raw mode. Uh, so and and actually, even if I was really good with colors. I think I wouldn't use it on this film because the environments of the film, I think it's uh, for me makes sense that they are a bit darker. Uh, yes, I agree. I agree. Yeah, if, if it would be a colorful thing, I think the film would be a bit more silly. I don't know <laughs> to, to explain this, yeah. but uh, it might become childish. And, and black and white, I think it helps to give the mood that I want. 
Yeah, it definitely does. I'm just going to read the description so that our audience is more aware of what the film uh, is about. So the okay. description, two figures with different physical impairments find their way to one another under a hazy sun. They have nothing to hide from each other. One's shortcoming is the other's strength. So we have these figures in this in this landscape. Um, mm -hmm. The way they are designed is quite interesting. It's almost like they're without their skins. Um, mm -hmm. How did you come up with that image? Um, well, I think the idea of adaptation is something that it, it comes a lot to my thoughts, you, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, uh, when I think about this, I think sometimes we use a lot of, a lot of uh, layers, a lot of skins, a lot of masks, we can call whatever we want, mm -hmm. to hide some stuff that we think that uh, are a handicap, but most part of the times they are not <laughs> and uh, this the, the in both characters they have uh, an extra part of their body that they hide the the boy it's the head because he has a really small uh, head so he wants to hide and he uses a mask and the girl it's the body uh, she uses it she uses a fake body to make her more fit into the the world uh, but I create this when I read the book, and uh, and at that book, there was the characters that have a really really small head and a huge body, and they hide their faces, their their heads, with the masks uh, because they were really dummy, and uh, they don't want to show the people that they were really dummy. And so the idea of being dumb, it's through the size of the head. <laughs> So uh, these characters impressed me a lot uh, because I thought visually they were really interesting, but I didn't like the needs of associate like a physical characteristic to uh, intelligence or something like that. So I, I decided to, to shape the characters to make it fit in a story that I would like. What is the book that you're referring to? Uh, the book itself, it's... Um, the dic dictionary of the imaginary places. Okay. Uh, so it's a, a dictionary of a lot of places that doesn't exist. It just exists in literature and uh, music, and and so this is was one place that was connected to the Wizard of Oz, uh, and there was a, a, an island with these strange characters. Uh, but I don't know the name in English, <laughs> the, the the name of uh, these characters. Yeah, say it in Portuguese. I'm sure somebody will contact me and and tell me what it is. Okay, uh, in Portuguese it was País dos Bizarros, uh, and it was a part of a, an island that belongs to the the Wizard of Oz uh, lands. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So you mentioned three characters. Uh, tell us about this third character. It's a dog. Mm -hmm. uh, a dog that dies at the beginning. This mm -hmm. is a spoiler. <laughs> but uh, yes. It, and uh, actually the dog is uh, um, the dog of the, the man, the, one of the characters. But the character the the male character has to deal with the lost has to adapt to the death uh, and the death of the dog becomes the the link between he and she the yeah. the male character and the female character so the third character is a dog but in fact is a the link itself mm -hmm. uh, that it's a name in portuguese Elu. <laughs> yes I don't think it's I, I don't think it's a spoiler because it happens early on in the yeah film. that's true that's true <laughs> and, and it's a significant character um, in your film because it's mm -hmm. it's there for the duration of the film and mm -hmm. um, as you mentioned it's a wonderful tie a wonderful link to the two other characters the animation uh, you had a, a team assisting you uh, can mm -hmm. you talk about uh, that process. Uh, yes, I have a, a, a wonderful team. Uh, it's uh, this film is as it is because of them. <laughs> okay. So uh, can you can you say their names for us, please? 
Uh, yes, so that is Dimitri, that he was my directing assistant because he was in the, all the stages of the production. Uh, and there is also Laura Gonçalves, which is a friend of mine that I already had a film that I directed with her before this one. Uh, I have Miguel Lima, I have Inês, I have uh, Inês Teixeira, I have Marta Reis Andrade, and I have Vitor Hugo. So this is the team that uh, helped me in the production itself, like drawing, uh, animating, in betweening, tracing, painting the frames. So the, the main part of the production, this was my... Uh, the main the main team because we also have people that collaborate uh, but uh, with a shorter time uh, okay. and this process in animation uh, it's uh, we we try to to define the visuals uh, and then we make a storyboard and then we give the the drawings of the storyboard to the animators and then after the animators do the keyframes we have uh, people that uh, fill the holes with uh, some more drawings, like it calls in between. And then we have the people that make the painting, but all of them, not all of them, but uh, the, some of them make all the parts of the process, uh, which help them to get into the film and be in, uh, connected to the movement and to the painting, because they both are really, really important to to make people feel the characters and the environments of the film. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To me, because I'm not trained in animation, it looks like chalk, chalk on a blackboard that mm -hmm. um, you just, you trace and you shadow and you sketch. So uh, thanks for explaining all the different levels that, that <laughs> go into, that go into making this. Yeah, but that I just, I don't want to be uh, to have a, an exhausting explanation about the technique, the technique, but just to say that this was drawn drawn with the graphite uh, pencils mm -hmm. and graphite powder, and so it's a powder, uh, a black powder and uh, black uh, pencils that we need to draw in uh, black but thinking in a drawing in a way that it's possible to invert. For example, when we draw an eye, the the ball of the eye, it will be uh, empty and we start to scratch with the black around to have the white. So we need to think in an inverted way. So it's not, we don't draw directly in white, we draw in black and then we invert. So this oh. is the process, yeah. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> It Thank might you. be a bit boring, but uh, no, it's not boring at all. It's fascinating. It adds to um, it adds to our our knowledge about film and animation, mm -hmm. and makes us appreciate the work that goes into the process. So, how long did it take to complete the film? Uh, well, almost two years. Mm -hmm. So, with the team, this team that I that I spoke about right now, it was uh, one year, one year and a few months. But, you know, to prepare the idea and writing and uh, make the storyboard, everything ready for the team start. And after the team finished, I still had some time to, to make, uh, some time to, to do the sound, the sound design, the mix, the follies, uh, the post-production stuff. So everything together, it was around two years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For uh, for a twelve minute film, eleven minutes thirty nine seconds. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> welcome to animation. <laughs> yes. Yeah. If we want to make a future film, we need to be like hundreds of us. Yes. Um, <laughs> do it in four or five years. Yeah. <laughs> right. I don't think the general public understands how much time goes into creating these animated works. So has anybody ever asked you, why do you do it? Why do you spend so much of your time uh, doing this? Well, this, this is my reality uh, because every, every uh, works that I've, uh, films that I worked, even to other directors, it was this kind of time. So my graduation was painting. So before doing animation as I'm doing it now, 
I used to make like uh, drawings, paintings, and something that I really like in animation. And it's we spend so much time with the same idea that that we take the idea to a really mit mature level. You know, it's not something that you don't think uh, a lot. It. it, it it's not so Im immediately, you know, so it's good because you have a time to think that I didn't found in other uh, fields. For example, if I w work on, it would be impossible for me to work in the same painting for uh, one month. Imagine that to have time to think in a film for two years, so the things start to develop in a different way. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I may. Yeah. No, I understand. Um, I once, uh, I once asked uh, an animator, Michel Oslo, um, and he does shadow um, animation. Mm -hmm. And I said, "You must have a lot of passion for your work because it takes so long." And he said, "No, it's not passion; it's patience." <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 yes. That's true. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> I agree. I agree. Uh, the idea, because if you are not patient, you can make animation, but not this kind of animation, mm -hmm. it's other stuff, because you deal a lot with repetition, you know, for a day, it's good that you be able to make 25 drawings really similar to each other. And if you don't, if you are not patient, you want to, I don't know, fall asleep really early <laughs> in the day, I don't want to do that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so where were you when you found out that you were selected for the Toronto International Film Festival? At my place. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And and it was I, I was really, really happy because I, I've been to Toronto before with the my previous film with the, the my friend that I that I that she's part of the team of this film as well. And I was there in two thousand seventeen. And I really liked it. And it was like a bitter sweet feeling because it's not possible to be there now. <laughs> but yes. uh, even though I, I'm really happy to be a part of it. Yeah. yeah. It, it's probably harder for you because you know what you're missing. <laughs> yes. Sometimes I think, oh, I prefer not to know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> What's the name of your previous film that you were at TIFF with? Uh, in English, is uh, Drop by Drop. And in Portuguese? Agua Molde. I'm glad I didn't have to say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and actually the translation, it, it doesn't mean the same. It's an expression. So Drop by Drop, it's another expression that it means the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, and it was a documentary, animation documentary. Yeah, and what was it about? Uh, it's about the countryside of Portugal, uh, the the feeling that people need to abandon the the countryside. Uh, because me and Laura, my friend, we went to a, to we we did uh, several journeys in the countryside, and we interviewed people. At the beginning, it was supposed to be about them because the, there was some uh, damps, uh, building some damps here and, and there was, um, well, uh, some people were against, some people want it, but uh, in the end of the day, it, it's not a good thing for the, the countryside. Mm -hmm. And we went there asking people about this kind of uh, issues, but at the end, people just say, we are here alone, uh, it would be good to have some new people here and the recordings that we collect in that journeys, we create a narrative, a fiction narrative, and we animate that, uh, but uh, bring the voices of the, the people from the countryside to the, the people, to the, the cinema audience. Yeah. Did it help them have people move to the countryside? Probably after uh, one or two years after Corona, might be the, the things might be different because uh, you start to understand uh, how you can deal to to work uh, from home and. Mm -hmm. But for now, though, it's it's really hard to live in those conditions. So yes. people don't want to. Yeah, um, a lot yeah. of things need to change to be possible. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, it, it's interesting that you mention um, COVID because with so many people, you know, working from home and businesses having to adapt, maybe that frees up people to to live where they would prefer. Yes, and, and I think if you are healthy, it's okay. But for example, there is not so many hospitals. The hospitals are a bit far away from there. Uh, if you have a work already, it's good. But if you don't, it's completely hard to, to mm -hmm. find a job there. Well, there is a, a several, the transports are not really good. If you want to go to a main city, uh, it's not so easy. You, In a normal road, you would need like 30 minutes, but as the things are now, you might need two hours or three hours. So so people don't, it's, it's not so easy for, for the people. Uh, but I think the things are starting to change because the prices uh, here in the big cities because of the Airbnb and all that stuff became completely impossible. So I think people are start to put on the table the option to move to the countryside because sometimes it's a really nice places but uh, just don't have the resources the facilities yes, yes. Mm -hmm. um it's interesting because when i my image of portugal is, is the cities right and i never mm -hmm. think about rural portugal oh, so it's, it's, beautiful. So, it's so it's been interesting <laughs> that it's it's been interesting to to hear you talk about that because the images that i see of of Portugal or where my friends go, it's always the city. It's never the reality of the of the countryside. Yes, and the countryside is, is really, really beautiful, I must say. Uh, even the north or, or the south, the landscape changes a lot. It's a small country, but in the north, the landscape is completely different than the landscape in the south. So it's it's a good um, place to explore is the, the countryside of, of Portugal because uh, uh, it's not so touristic uh, and it's still raw, you know, uh, mm. with the animals, with the nature, with the people itself. It, it's a really nice place. I would love a nice... It's, it's not just one place. I'm talking as if it's just yes. like one yes. place, but it's not. Even the, the film itself, we did it uh, going uh, to several villages, but uh, in the end we made just one. So it's a fictional thing that represents several situations, but in the film it's just one. But in fact, we collect all the information to do this in uh, four, four villages. So uh, when I talk about this, it's like uh, an, uh, something, it's not about specific place, but uh, interior of Portugal has a lot of places to visit, I must say, yeah. Alexandra, did I say that right? Yes, pretty well then. <laughs> <laughs> Alexandra, thank you so much for joining me today and talking about Elo, Thai, but also mm -hmm. about Drop by Drop. It was interesting to hear about that too. Oh, I'm really glad that you invite me to be here today. Uh, thank you so much, Donna. <laughs>
Thank you so much for tuning in to The More, The Merrier. You can find me, www.ciut.fm, Wednesday mornings, 1 a.m. My contact information on social media is at TMTM with Donna G on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. You can also find the podcast on Red Circle. Just search for The More, The Merrier. Leaving you now with music from... Toronto's own Amai Kuda. After my interview with Alessandra, the track that you heard was TikTok by a Toronto group called Black Sam. They're no longer together, but uh, I like to throw in some music by local artists whenever I can, which is why you also heard from Jeff Kearns. And now Amai Kuda. This is Donna G signing off. Until next time. Bye-bye. She get the rhythm and the rhyme and she know just how to move it. She move her hips and she show you how to groove it. And when she whiny, yeah, she know just how to roll it. And if you want, she can tell you how to shake that. Well, give her room when she take over the dance floor. Give her light and she show you what you ask for. Give her time, you be begging her to see more. Hey, hey. She got her arms up in the air. Her feet up on the ground. Well, she ain't here to please you. You better watch her if you feed you. Cause she move Watch them. Hey. Cause she's a woman and she know just what she got. Yes, we just want to shape just like a goddess. For fake up, bubble up, spoo delicious, real thick. And every part of her shape like the earth is. For moves in front, for moves behind, half moves, smile, style it. I, universe inside. For moves in front, for moves behind, half moves, smile, style it. I, universe inside. Arms up in the air, her feet up on the ground. But she ain't here to please you. You better watch her if you feed. Cause she moving Watch her Size infinity lies between her thighs. The manifestation of the sacred process of creation. A little between worlds in the body of every girl. She is priest, church, all the holy text, all in one. The fount to you, the tree, and the bears fruit. To get some men try to rape us and down press her. They think the husband is to be the beast of burden. Her power ebbs and flows, but never goes. And when it's ready, it will flow like greens to the earth. Oh my, like greens to the earth. Way. Cause she's a woman and she knows just what she got. Hey, sweet as honey, shape just like her goddess. But fake up, but loves food, delicious, real thick. And every part of her shape like the earth is. For moves in front, for moves behind, half moves, smile, style it, I. Universe inside, for moves in front, for moves behind, half moves, smile, style it, I. Universe inside, arms up in the air, her feet up on the ground. But she ain't here to please you, you better watch her if you feed you, cause she's moving. Watch her, hey. She got her arms up in the air, her feet up on the ground. But she ain't here to please you You better watch her if you feel too Cause she moving Watch her